Hey everyone, it's Simon. I hope you're having a great week. Today, I've got a couple quick pointers on how to quickly switch between photo and video with your A7 cameras. I know everyone has, everybody's got their own unique way that they love setting up their cameras. And for me, I like to have all of my A7 cameras matched perfectly because it allows me to be more efficient while I'm shooting out in the field. But one of the biggest things that when you're out shooting is you wanna be able to quickly switch between the different settings that you need depending on the type of content you're trying to create. A lot of times while I'm shooting out on a project in Africa, it's very quick that I have to go from stills to 4K video to slow-mo video and the A7 cameras thankfully give us that option. The ability to have settings memory recall, which is a standard feature in the Sony A7's camera is a game changer. And so I actually set it up to allow myself a very specific pattern that lets me be efficient and I mirror it across all of my cameras so that way I know all of my stuff is super, super spot on. So how do I do it? Well, if you look right here on the dial, you've got your one, two, and then you've got memory. And so this lets me be able to keep everything nice and nimble. Um, I keep all of my photo settings stuck on the memory, and then I keep all of my 4K video on one, and then I keep my slow motion settings on two. And so what that allows me to do is usually, if I'm going from video to stills, I'm going from, the four, from 4K 24 frames a second. And so I'm gonna pop that up and we're actually gonna go to it. So now you can actually see what my settings are. So I keep my first memory recall is actually in 4K 24 frames per second, 100 megabits per second. This allows me to have a nice chunky file that I can get internally uh, which keep, again, keeps me light and nimble while I'm traveling, but still gives me a great file to work with. Uh, one of the other things I like about that setup is the fact that it lets me have flexibility in post if I have to do any cropping, that kind of thing. Uh, then if I pop up to Memory Recall 2, right now I have it set to 60 frames a second, 1080p, and part of this is I'm able to keep my shutter speeds set accordingly to the different settings. So if I'm in 4K 24, when I go to one, it automatically changes my shutter speed to 1 50th of a second. And then if I am shooting slow motion, when I bump it over to two, it automatically changes that to 1 1 25th of a second. So that is part of why the memory recall is huge because not only do I not have to go change settings through a menu, but it also automatically changes my shutter speed and everything so I'm ready to shoot as soon as I get there. Um, what part of why I keep the manual mode at my photo settings is because it automatically remembers what it was, the settings were at that, which almost is like another memory recall uh, dial button, essentially. And so that is huge for me because yes, you have the other four slots that you can button over to, but if I just have to spin the dial, it allows me to be that much more efficient without having to do one more thing, which may, can be the difference in my line of work of capturing the shot or not capturing the shot. Um, so that is, that is huge for me with that. The memory recall has the ability to do, I think four extras on top of the two that have the dial. But again, you have to button over to the right thing, make sure you get it and so on and so forth. It can be a little bit of a hassle. Whereas keeping it with just dial spins makes it so much easier, so much more efficient, and it just works really, really well for me. And one of the other things is I keep my picture profiles locked on all of it. If I'm going into a new project, I make sure, because it can change your picture profile in the memory recall, make sure that your picture profile matches across all of them, just so that way you know that all of the settings are gonna match perfectly so your look fits across everything. Um, certain projects I have required different settings. Usually, if you go check out my previous video, I'm using a custom Cine 4, but I do have to use log and stuff like that from time to time. So that is what I do to stay super light and nimble and quick when I'm changing between photo and video modes. 
Um, I hope this guys this helped you guys out a bit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. Make sure to like and subscribe. I've got some great stuff coming up and I can't wait to share more with you. Have a great week.